Bible, Acts. Okay, the, we started in Acts and we covered uh, chapter 1 and just kind of an overview of the whole book. We're going to pick up at chapter 2, which is uh, probably the most one of the most famous pa- uh, chapters and passages in the whole Bible. Um, and it starts out in chapter 2, verse 1, And when the day of Pentecost cost had come, and I like what it says in King James because it says when the day of Pentecost had fully come. And I, I like that because what this or was being fulfilled would be another way to translate it. What this is is the day of Pentecost it was a, a feast that was celebrated every year. Uh, it was called the Feast of Weeks and then it became Sha- Shavuot. I never can say that right. But anyway, it's, it was the day that commemorated uh, a couple of things. One, it was a day that commemorated uh, the writing of the law and giving it to Moses, the tablets on the Mount of Sinai. And here, it was also in the Feast of Weeks. You can find the timing for this in Leviticus 23. It was seven sevens, so seven, seven weeks plus a day. And so it was on the 50th day. So the word Pentecost simply means 50th. And it was the 50th day after the waving of the sheaf of first fruits which is the day that Jesus rose from the dead. So we, that's why we can tell that they were in the, the upper room for 10 days because he says Jesus was with them for 40, and then Pentecost came 10 days later because Pentecost is the 50th day after the resurrection day, the waving of the sheaf of first fruits from uh, Leviticus 23. So this is, we're in the days of fulfillment when we're in the book of Acts. We're in the days of fulfillment when we're, when we're in the Gospels, the fulfillment of so many prophecies that were prophesied you know, hundreds and hundreds of years before are, are now being fulfilled, and the same thing's happen, happening here in the book of Acts. So we, we read uh, in, in verse 1, I didn't even get through that, and when the day of Pentecost had come or had fully come or was being fulfilled, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. So a noise comes, and it sounds like a rushing wind. And verse 3, And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. I have a a picture, and I don't know, I think it was just a picture taken from the back of an auditorium in in Mozambique. And it's really interesting because it kind of shows a setting in a meeting where there was like, you can see like it looks like like flames on most everybody in the room. It's really unique, but something like that was happening here. It looked like tongues of fire or flames of fire were, were sitting on each, resting on each one of the people there. Verse 4 says, They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues, tongues meaning languages, and the Spirit was giving them, as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Uh, and so what we see here. A sound like a rushing mighty wind, the appearance of flames of fire, and then they start to speak in other languages. And it's, uh, so we'll go on here. Verse 5. Now there were Jews in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were bewildered because they were each one of them hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and marveled, saying, Why are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear them in our own language to which we were born? So they're they're kind of shocked. They're you know they're seeing all these Galilean guys talking in all their languages, and they'd all come because three times a year, the Jews were uh, supposed to come back to Jerusalem and celebrate the three annual feasts, and this is one of them. So there's there's Jews from all over the world, all over the inhabited world in that area. They've come back, and they they're all coming from different nations where they speak different languages, but they're hearing these guys, all these Galileans that aren't from other places, speaking in their languages. So verse 11, it says, We hear them in our own tongues speaking of the mighty deeds of God. And they all continued in amazement and great perplexity, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others were mocking and saying, They are full of sweet wine. You know, these guys are drunk at 9 o'clock in the morning. So anyway, what we see here, it's an interesting thing, is the, the, the other place we see tongues in the Bible, you know, would be like Genesis 11. And all the nation, all the people gathered together, and they were building a tower called Babel. They were building it up, and God came down and confused their languages and divided, them, gave them many languages, and it divided them. So at that at that point, it says that languages took one nation and made it many. And now what we find here is the whole cycle is reversed, and God uses a gift of languages and takes many nations and makes them one. 
people from many nations through this gift all of a sudden are united as this gift is being demonstrated out there before them as they're hearing them speak of the mighty deeds of God in their own language uh, they're attracted to that and it it, it brings attention so much uh, so that uh, Peter gets a chance to preach so this is the fulfillment of Pentecost now God wrote the Ten Commandments and this is a celebration of that day to Moses gave them to Moses and now what we're seeing is now the commandments are being written on their hearts so this is like the day of Pentecost has fully come it's come in its fullness not not just laws written on stone but now the law of God written on people's hearts and we see this being fulfilled right before their eyes so uh, it fully come I'm looking at my notes here got a little behind so we end with the, they think they're drunk. You know, it's, it's amazing some of the most spiritual experiences in the Bible. Uh, Hannah crying out to the Lord for a child before she gets Samuel, and, and Eli, Eli, the high priest, thought she was drunk. Here they, they thought these guys were drunk. And so some of these powerful experiences that happen in the Bible uh, are mistaken by people from the outside looking in because people are so overwhelmed by the Spirit of God or by their, their passion for God that it looks like they've uh, they they're not in their normal state, which they're not. You know, here they're filled with the Holy Spirit, and we're speaking in languages that they'd never heard before. So Pop, Peter gets up and he begins to preach, and he's preaching. He quotes out of the Book of Joel. Uh, first, he explains these guys aren't drunk, uh, like you think. This is what ha- what Joel spoke about. That in the last days, uh, I will pour out my Spirit upon all mankind. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will see visions, old men will dream dreams. And he goes and he, he quotes this whole passage out of Joel, that there'll be signs and wonders, the sun will be turned to darkness, the moon into blood, before that great and glorious day of the Lord shall come. And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, verse 21. And it's interesting here because why, this would really grab their attention, the sun to darkness and moon to blood, because just, you know, uh, 53 days before this, the sun went dark in the middle of the day noon to three o'clock when Jesus was hanging on the cross. So, I mean, when he's, when he's quoting Joel, and he says, the sun will go to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord, or great and glorious day, it says here. Uh, you know, it's, it's like, wow, okay, maybe he's got something here. Because that's a pretty remarkable sign that uh, was just observed by everyone. It was hard to avoid that. So he goes on and, and and uh, he continues to preach, and in verse 22, he says, Men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus, the Nazarene, a man attested you by God with miracles and wonders and signs which God performed through him in your midst, midst, just as you yourselves know, this man delivered up by the predetermined plan and foreknowledge of God, you nailed to a cross by the hands of godless men and put him to death. And God raised him up again, putting an end to the agony of death, since it was possible impossible for him to be held by its power. And so... He goes in his preaching and he, he goes directly to the people he's talking to and says, you know, God chose Jesus, a special vessel. He, he anointed him with power. He's the one, uh, you know, that's, that's been chosen by God. He's, he's basically, he's, he's saying here, they would understand he's the Messiah. And you nailed him to the cross. And so he's really, uh, he doesn't spare his audience at all in this. He's not there to win friends and influence people. He's... Well, influence people, yes, but not necessarily to win friends because he's, he's coming against them with quite an a, a accusation. He quotes David uh, after that, verses 25 through 28. And then uh, he's talking about David said that you know, his bones wouldn't decay. He's, he's, he's prophesying about the one whose bones wouldn't decay and that kind of thing. And, and Peter says, you know, We've got David's tomb. His bones decayed. He wasn't talking about himself. He's talking about this one Jesus. He's not abandoned. His bones didn't decay. And he's been raised up by God himself as as a witness uh, and as his uh, Messiah, as the chosen one. And so he concludes uh, this message. He says, Therefore, in verse 36, Let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. So powerful message here by by Peter, he's not denying Jesus anymore like he did before the when Jesus was being tried. But all of a sudden, he's declaring here with great boldness, right into the face of these people, you know that you God declared him Lord and Christ, and 
you crucified him. 